G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and in this video we're talking about female body construction. When referring to construction, I'm essentially talking about the basic fundamentals of drawing the shape of something. As explained in the facial construction and male body construction videos, it is essentially one of these. What we're drawing when we're drawing the construction are the very shapes and lines that make up the skeleton and the, the very basic, you know, system of what something should look like. I'm going to be clear with you. This video has boobs. So get your immature little giggles out and put on your serious drawing face. Mmm, boobies. Aside from that, I do have a confession to make. I have never been very good at drawing women. Especially when I was younger, it was something that I wasn't very good at, naturally, because I'm not a woman, so I kind of shied away from it. And over years of developing as an artist, being wary of drawing a particular thing doesn't help improve it. I'm going to show you a picture that's going to be very incriminating to me. This is a before and after. The image on the left is a is an image of a female that I drew around this time last year and I am ashamed to that picture to my very core. It's disgusting and uh, it was in early development of a game project I was work working on on which my team fondly refer to it now as the lizard woman and you can see why. She has scales and everything. It's disgusting. Um, on the right is the improved version uh, which I spent a lot of time working on to make better. The point is, even up until very, very recently, it's been one of my weakest points in drawing. But what happened was I started reading a comic series called Witchblade, and if you haven't heard of it, it's really good to check it out. And looking at art from someone called J. Scott Campbell, who's a fantastic comic artist, um, and decided, you know what, I'm sick of being scared of drawing you know, something I'm not good at. And so I knuckled down, and in about a week, I got to the level that I'm at now. So only about, about a week's work, I, I got to the point where I felt comfortable drawing something that I just really didn't enjoy drawing before. Now, I enjoyed drawing women because women are nice to look at. Boobies. Anyways, <clears throat> back to work. To start off, let's do what we did for the male body construction video. We're going to draw the the basic shapes that we use in our construction. And you can compare to the male construction and see how it's different. Now the rib cage is the same. That's fine. The rib cage of the female is pretty much the same as the guys. The hips are a bit bigger. Because women have vaginas, and vaginas and wombs explode babies out of the end of them. I assume that we're a very mature audience watching this and that you can take everything that I'm saying very seriously and know that I'm not, you know, joking around at all. Okay. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, there's a curvature shape of the spine. And it's something like that. With females, their posture tends to feel a little more exaggerated. So that, that curve works best with much more exaggeration to it. So the next thing that I'm going to put in is shoulders. Now the shoulders aren't as broad as the males. Let's just put in the head. Okay. <clears throat> now we draw the lines of where the arms will go. Okay, 
So just like I did in the other video, we start off with a basic skeleton and that's what we have there. Now, as you can see, it already looks pretty masculine. It doesn't look very feminine. Now, the next part is where we really work in the style of making some something look much more feminine. And I'll explain what I do as I do it. Working with the shape of the body, there's obviously a few things that stick out on a female body. One of them being breasts. So it feels weird saying breasts. Who says breasts? Boobs. Titties. <laughs> <clears throat> Serious animation face. <sighs> what The way I tend to um, approach drawing boobs is there's a line around here, which is the collarbone. Actually, it's a bit higher than that. I, from the top of there, at two points, I imagine a kind of teardrop shape. Almost like a water balloon hanging from a point. That's how I approach, personally, I approach drawing breasts. Because that way, when you draw on different angles and, and um, in motion and things like that, you can actually kind of treat it as a separate object because it kind of has a weight and motion of its own. So do the teardrop shape. This back is nowhere near arched enough, so I'm just gonna go in and fix that. And that's the beauty of using construction lines is you can fix it up early and not later. Well, you can fix it up later, but it's easier to fix up early. Now let's keep the consistent lines. Draw. Now when I say teardrop, it doesn't always have to be that shape. I mean starting at the point, but essentially shaping it around a ball at the bottom like that. Okay, I'll get the arms out of the way. Actually, no, I'll do those later because I want to focus on the main things. Okay, so we've got the basic boobs position in. The second thing that stands out, as was mentioned before, is the butt and the hip area. So you really got to almost do a similar thing that you did for the breasts um, in the weight being lower but the beginning of it being higher. So one thing that's very important to keep in mind is that with men, when I draw the waists, the waist is around there and the hip is pretty much in the same section. With women, you kind of start the waist higher and curve it longer. So you have a longer curvature and a, and a more extreme curve into, into the hip. So the side angle isn't a very good angle to show that on. This one is. So we start with the back here. It curves right in, but then not starting too low, actually starting around here, we start to have that come back down. <clears throat> now, if we imagine this bottom half as a kind of 3D sphere box thing, we separate it into into the two legs up the top. And here is where we curve the abdomen into where the... <laughs> you always get those moments like, what do you say? Do you say vagina? Can you say that on YouTube? Shh. <clears throat> I just hope my mom doesn't watch this video. Because it's so naughty to say the word of a body part. Now, another thing that I used to not really contemplate the importance of, but I'm learning more and more, is that, okay, there's a hip here and there's a bum here. That's fine. But there's actually a hip on the other side. <laughs> and I tended to not do that very much when I started off. But yeah, you got to really have the hip come out on both sides. So this girl's a bit of a curvy girl. Let's draw in there. Start drawing in the hands. Okay. 
So same thing here, and I'll explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it again. So, as you see, the waist starts quite high as it curves into the hips. And around the same area, because the legs divide here, because they have stronger up, upper thighs here, we curve the abdomen in. And then we start drawing the meat on the bones. So as you can see, there are a lot of scribbles in my construction lines. That's fine. This is the time to scribble. Construction lines are a free pass to make everything look messy as shite. So you can see the difference already. That here, it looks like nothing. It's completely genderless. Pretty much like one of these. Completely genderless. But then when you accentuate the things that need to be accentuated and go from there, you start to get better form. So next, I'm going to do the line work. And I'll try and keep it fairly quick because I don't want to lose your attention span. I know how YouTube is these days. So from here, we have a lot of thickness. So with our lines, let's focus on being light so that it balances each other out. So for instance, having a slender neck, you don't want to be, that's, that's another thing too, that, that one of the reasons I used to have a difficult time drawing women is because <clears throat> while I was good at drawing the brutality of more um, heavy objects and men and things like that, monsters and blah, blah, blah. The, uh, the, with the women, it's kind of less is more. If you go lighter on the lines in the end, it will thank you. So something went terribly wrong there, and I think it's I started the leg too far forward. And the butt comes in. So when I draw a butt on the side, I have the weight come down like that, and then it folds into the back of the leg. So the weight comes in, curves down, and then then the leg comes out. Okay, so that's a side. I'll start doing this. So. Now, I actually noticed in editing <laughs> the male construction video that I squint a lot when I draw. I don't even really know that. I think I think it's a distancing thing, subconsciously. You know, when you squint and kind of look back like that. And it's always good to, to keep a mental distance from the image and a visual distance every now and then as well. Because it helps you see things every now and then that you might not really catch. Unless you make sure you're ready to catch it. So as you can see, I, I tend to do a, a lot more corrections on my female drawings than I do with my male drawings. And that's okay. That's because I'm still learning. I'm just Essentially, this video is to share whatever I have learned that helped me, even though I'm still learning in the process. And again, if there are any things that 
you know that I could do to improve. I'm more than happy to hear it. That's the key to progression is the willingness to change. He said philosophical, philosophically while drawing a boob. Okay. Again, you don't want the shoulders to be too sharp or they'll start to look masculine. You want to keep it fairly soft. That's why the the ball joint that I drew in the in the um, construction is much softer than the male one. Oops. A lot of line redrawing when you draw on the computer. There we go. Lots of squinting, huh? And we've got the basics of the line work in. I think that might make it a bit too slim. That is the difference between males and females is the neck of the male is often almost as thick as the head itself, whereas the female, it tapers in a lot more because it brings in that elegant look. So... There you go. There are, the, there are the basic construction forms of the female. So if we go back to the start again, formless, genderless, we start to accentuate certain features and then we add the, the skin or glove of those features, keeping a focus on minimalism. Less is more. You don't want to overdo it. Now, the last thing I want to do is just go over three things that help me, that might help you, to keep in mind when drawing females. Just three little things to keep in the back of your head when you're drawing a female form. So I'm just going to get drawing and talk as I draw. The first, the first is curves. Now, in the past, when I would draw a female, I tended to compensate with the fact that I wasn't very good at drawing them by thinking, okay, well, boys are big, girls are small, I'll make them smaller. So all the girls that I drew were extremely thin. And uh, <laughs> that didn't look feminine. It just looked skinny and unfed. <laughs> So, so just got the basic construction lines here done. Cool. Yeah. So I learned when I did my knuckle down in that week, looking at a lot of J. Scott Campbell art and, and uh, Witchblade comics and um, reference videos, uh, that you really just got to not be afraid to get curvy. Now, here's a little trick that my brother taught me. The line at which you align the shoulders, so here it's about there, the top of that shoulder and the top of the other shoulder, should be the line underneath the breast. It should be parallel with that. So you can see that there's a bit of skew here. So I always tend to, especially when I'm doing trickier angles, it's very helpful to draw those two lines just to make sure that symmetry is maintained. So now you can just go through and get rid of those lines that they've served their purpose. I think the breasts are a bit high and small, so I'm going to bring them down and out a bit. So that's the first thing. I should write it here. Curves. Don't be afraid Oops. to have curves. That includes things on the arm. The arm was a, uh, one of the main things where, okay, I'll just draw it really thin like that. I'd be like, yeah, that's feminine. But no, um, 
essentially they almost have as much you know meat on their bones as we do a little more and a little less in some areas but so, you know in the upper arms feel free to you know add a little bit of a you know a little bit of a fat pocket nothing sexier than a curvy girl depending on the amount of curves and where the curves are. Okay. The second thing is work with the hips. Again, the hips are the baby maker. Women make babies, men cannot. They make babies and they are birthed through that region. Now, I can already see here that the hips are too low, so I'm going to bring that up and drag the whole image down for you to see better. So that the waist thing that I was talking about starts higher up here. There we go. See that? See how far out the... the buttocks curves here look at that one massive curve and it works in the past before I'd really tried to figure out what I was doing and was probably a little too shy to look at pictures of girls in public the um <laughs> when drawing in school and stuff is uh <laughs> you know really just got to work with the features. So there we go. So that's the second thing to work with. The third thing that's good to keep in mind uh, uh, is the chest. Now, I don't say boobs because I actually don't mean boobs. I mean the entire chest area. If I meant boobs, then this would be a very different image. It was very lopsided. Now I have to do the other one just to make the joke more complete. Actually, that probably could be a bit bigger. But, um, no, I mean chest. I mean women naturally tend to have that better posture that men don't. In the same way that men kind of thrust their pelvis forward a little bit more, I think I think it's a very animalistic thing. We do it subconsciously. We present ourselves for, for a potential coupling with suitors. But yeah, let the chest push forward. That doesn't mean have massive boobs. It means let this curve up and let this curve out. Let the chest come forward and let the hips stick out. And in the end end up with a much more dynamic and feminine image. Another thing that's good to remember, which isn't one of these three things, but it's also it's just, you know, handy to to remember, is that these are weighted but also connected to the armpit. So in here, as you see this the the breast curve around up here it almost directly connects to where the armpit is. So I feel good about the proportions on that image. Now I'll go through and add my lines. And as I said before, minimalism. Less is more. Work with the curves. Don't be afraid of them. So it's always good to draw in the collarbone as well. I think that adds a, a lot of femininity too. Sometimes um, some of the most feminine and attractive images of, of girls aren't necessarily a frontal naked form. It, it could be as much as a seeing the skin of the back of uh, an open back dress, you know, like because of that, that curve, that form and this neckline in a, in a low cup, not on a, in a low cup top, not not necessarily accentuating the boobs, the uh, the the collarbone and the shoulders 
are quite soft and, and work quite well. Another thing that helps, that we haven't drawn feet here today because we've focused on the more obvious features of the female body. Feet. I'm just going to add a quick footnote. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, women are in heels a lot. <laughs> and it, it has become almost a subconscious item of femininity. So that when when you see feet of a female, you you think it looks more feminine subconsciously when they're like that. So that doesn't mean you always need to draw female feet like that. But if drawing something particularly art artistic and and delicate, that is something to keep in mind. Keeping toes pointed or keeping the foot angle down can really help. I think we've covered pretty much everything that I, I feel that I can help you out with. Um, again, I'm still learning, <laughs> but these are the things that I've learned that help me. And I hope, I hope that they have been helpful to you. Thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed this video. Links are below to download the original files for reference. Remember, if you animate or draw something cool, be sure to share it on Newgrounds.com, the internet's best source for animations, games, art and music. Until next time, see you later.